Hello, welcome to the quick start tutorial for the new Snowplow Normalize DBT package. This package is designed to take the atomic events table that Snowplow generates for you and normalize it out into one table per event type that you're interested in with the self-describing event column and the content columns flattened out as well to make it easier to use with downstream reverse ETL tools. The idea of the package is also that you don't have to write all of these models yourself, but it can be customized to the self-describing events and context that you are tracking. So in front of me, I've just got a brand new uh, DBT project. Um, I've kind of set up my profile and I've also just ahead of time set up some variables that I know I'm going to need for the package. So in this case, I'm setting the start date and I'm only interested in, in backfilling kind of one day at a time just for, for the demo purpose. I've also got my packages.yaml file where here I am loading from the demo branch of the Git repo. Once this package has been released and has gone live, you can install it via the DBT hub in, in the standard way. So I'm going to install the package using DBT depths. And we should see that once this package has been installed, the package itself doesn't actually come with many models. Um, the models it comes with are the standard kind of incremental this run type models um, that all of the Snowplow packages use to only process new events. But it doesn't come with any of the derived tables that traditionally make up the other, the other Snowplow packages. Instead, in this utils folder, there's a, a Python script which we're going to be using to generate our models. And there's two example files. One is a resolver to connect to Igloo, and one is the config for the, the normalized package, which I'm going to take and I'm going to copy out into my main, uh, into my main project. So when I open up this uh, file, there's quite a lot going on here. Um, all of it's documented in the Snowplow docs, so I'm not going to go over everything. And in fact, I'm going to just use a lot of default values, so I'm going to just go ahead and, and delete some of these. The resolver is, is the file that we use to connect to different Igloo registries. If your schemas are stored on a uh, private registry or a self-hosted one, you will need to use this file. If you're just using Igloo Central, like I'm going to be today, you can set this value to default and it will just do the connection to, to Igloo Central. I'm going to leave this as the default value. And then I've got this events block here, which is the, really the meat of this package. So each, um, each object in here is going to generate a single model and will output to a single table in your database. So here we've got an event name. In this case, I'm looking at a page view. The columns from the atomic table I'm interested in. So I've just picked a, a random selection here. And the context we want to track along with those events and flatten the context columns out. So in this case, I'm tracking the web page and the, the YA UAA context as well to attach onto my page view events. Remember, you have to have tracked this with the event in your tracking, um, but this will this will uh, combine them and, and flatten them out within your warehouse. I'm going to alias those columns, and I picked a specific table name for this one. The next one is kind of link click. It's very similar again, but because link click is a self-describing event, we've had to provide as well the schema um, for that link click event. Say instead I didn't want to do a link click, I wanted to do maybe a submit form. That's not a problem at all. I can go over to Igloo Central and I can look for submit form. Click on that, general information, copy URL. And then I can replace that in here and change the event type to submit form. So if you've got your own self-describing events you're using, if you've got other types of events you want to track, that's just to do it is take one of these examples, copy it and edit it for what you need, bringing in the columns you're interested in, reference, referencing the schema for the self-describing event, and then any context you're interested in as well. So in this case, I've just brought in one context. I could quite easily go back to Igloo, copy another um, URL and add that to that list in there. Finally, there's this users uh, area. The idea of our users table is it uses the user ID in the atomic events table and every context you provide. And it generates a table that for each user ID, so one row per user ID, what is the latest information from that context or the latest record from that context uh, based on the collector timestamp? So you've always got an up-to-date users table, the latest information that you've chosen to capture. So once we've got that file and we're happy with it, we can save that. And then we need to generate this is where we call Python, and we're going to call that script that we saw before. So we need to say that it's in the dbt packages folder, in the snowplow normalize folder, in the utils folder, and then it's snowplow normalize model gen.py. 
We then need to, as the only argument in this case, tell it which file to read the config from. So I'm going to use this file here, so the example normal config. And if I run that, it should start to populate out these models. So it's generated two um, event type models, one users table, and then one kind of uh, filtered table. So if I look at the page view events, it's brought in those columns, um, but it's also then translated that Igloo URL into the column name and pulled through all of the columns, all of the attributes that are related to that schema. So I haven't had to go and copy and find all this information. I haven't had to check what's in my warehouse. Based entirely on the schema, it's generated all of the um, attributes that, are, that belong to that schema for either the context or in the case of the submit form, the self-describing event. And also because Snowflake needs you to explicitly cast it to a type, it's also pulled the type information through as well. And then it uses a, a macro to generate actual SQL. While waiting, I'm just going to do a quick dbt run. So this can run while I talk through the last two tables. So the users table, very similar, pulls out the context, pulls out the, the attributes, and then uses a macro to generate it. And the normalized table is really just a reference table for all of the events that have been processed. So in this case, it is capturing the event ID and the collector timestamp. Um, and for page view events, it's telling me that it's gone into this table here. And that's unioned on with all of my submit form events and so on. So our dbt run is finished. It was only one day's worth of events, so it was quite quick to process. Um, and I can see the, uh, the actual SQL that was run by looking in my compiled folder. So for this normalized one, we can see um, nice, quite a, a simple table um, that was actually kind of uh, run and produced there. We can see from my page view events, it's pulled in all of those contexts and all of the relevant um, attributes for that and cast them to the correct type. Same for my submit form. Um, it's pulled out all of the relevant stuff for my self-describing event and all of the relevant contexts in there as well. So this makes it really easy to normalize lots of different types of events, potentially with lots of different contexts that you're tracking against them, or that have really complex schemas, uh, because you don't have to go and process the schema and get all of the column information yourself. So long as you know what schema you're tracking against, this package will generate the models for you. Uh, there's lots more information in the docs, including other ways you can customize that configuration, and uh, other kind of example use cases as well.